first graders, welcome back to another day of making meaning. I am Miss Prescott, one of the first grade teachers at South Shore Pre-K-8 in Rainier Beach. Thank you so much for joining me again today. We got started on a new book yesterday and read the first part of it, and today we are going to be reading the rest of it. So that means you are going to be discussing the book and you're going to need a plan for that. So you may either turn and talk to someone at home that you're watching this with. Remember, you can speak in whatever language you feel comfortable in. If you don't have someone to watch this with at home, that's okay. You can turn and talk to me on the screen. After I ask a question, I'll go like this. And that means that I'm ready to listen to your smart thinking. If you don't want to do that, you can always grab a stuffed animal like my little friend Koala Bear, and you can turn and talk to them when it's time to discuss the book. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So in our first lesson, we heard the first part of An Elephant Grows Up. And this book is by Anastasia Suwin and illustrated by Michael L. Denman and William J. Hewitt. So we learned many things about African elephants. And today you're gonna hear the second part of the book, which tells more about what happens to elephants as they grow up. So, what have you learned about African elephants so far? Maybe you said that you learned that they walk in single file, oops, excuse me, that they walk in single file lines or maybe you remembered that they go to watering holes or that the little babies have to learn to use their trunks. Or maybe you remembered that they live in herds or groups of animals. Or maybe you remember that when they're first born, they are taller than a kitchen table. So now that we've learned some things about elephants, what do you wonder about elephants? So we've been learning about African elephants, so maybe you wonder about other types of elephants. Are there different ones? Maybe you're wondering more about how um, the herd behaves, how what they do in their herds as they're living there. Well, I want you to listen carefully today as we're reading and see if any of your questions or your wonderings get answered as we read the book. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We left off on this page learning about how elephants use their tusks and they can sometimes favor one of them, like their right tusk or their left tusk, just like we um, favor one of our hands and we either are right-handed or left-handed. A new surprise has arrived in the herd. At four years old, the calf now has a baby brother. When full grown, male elephants are much larger than females. African elephants are the largest land animal. Calves soon start to use their tusks for more than just digging. They use their tusks for resting their heavy trunks or ripping bark, bark is the outside covering of a tree, or ripping bark off trees. The tusks can also be used as weapons when needed. The brother and sister have grown a lot, but they are still growing. Most elephants keep growing until they are 30 or 40 years old. What did you learn about elephants from the part I just read? Maybe you learned that male elephants grow to be larger than female elephants, or that African elephants are the largest land animals. 
When the brother is about nine years old, he will join a different herd. The sister will stay with the cow and the calves in her herd and start a family. Bulls and cows live apart. At mating time, they call one another with low sounds that humans cannot hear. The elephant family continues to grow. The calf grew up and became a mother herself. She is now called a cow. Her brother also started a family in a different herd. He is now called a bull. A new journey begins under the hot African sun. A mother elephant always watches over her calf to make sure all is well. What did you learn about elephants from the part that I just read? Maybe you learned that when the elephant calf grows up and it's a female, it's called a cow. And when it, the male elephant grows up, he's called a bull. And that is the end of our book. So what was the most interesting thing that you learned about elephants? I think the most interesting thing that I learned was that they keep growing until they're 30 or 40 years old. That's a long time. Now, what are you still wondering about elephants? Well, for me, when I heard that fact about how they keep growing until they're 30 or sometimes 40 years old, it made me wonder how long can an elephant actually live? So as we have been reading nonfiction books, we have been learning about text features and we have been keeping track of those text features that we've seen and learned about on our chart. So here lists all the text features we've learned about. We've learned about glossaries, keywords, indexes, tables of table of contents, captions, diagrams, books and internet sites for learning more, and maps. So the book that we just read actually contains many of the text features that are listed in our chart. So one of them is a diagram. And so remember when we read the books Throw Your Tooth on the Roof and A Day in the Life of a Garbage Collector, we saw diagrams in those books as well. This diagram is a little bit different. So notice there are green numbers on the picture and they point uh, to different parts of the elephant. And then those parts that they point at are described down here. So, number one. Number one, ears. Elephants have their own air conditioning. As elephants flap their ears, the blood flow cools their body down. Two, two, feet. Although an elephant can weigh between 8,000 and 12,000 pounds, or 3,600 and 5,400 kilograms, they can walk in complete silence. They rarely leave footprints. Number three, right there. Three, skin. An elephant's skin is very sensitive. In fact, an elephant can feel a small fly landing on its skin. Four. Four, trunk. The trunk of an elephant is the longest nose of any living animal. And number five, five, tusks. Tusks are no different than ordinary teeth. So what new information did you learn from this diagram?
So maybe you learned that elephants can walk in complete silence and they don't leave footprints that often or that they have the longest nose of any living animal. So we can learn even more from looking at a diagram. That's why we learned we learn more from the text features and it's important for us to look out for those as we're reading nonfiction books. So this nonfiction book also had some other um, text features in it. We saw this at the beginning, the map, and that tells us where Africa is and where African elephants are. There's also a glossary that lists important words and a learn more area where it lists more books that you can read about elephants and websites you can go to as well as an index where you can look up uh, important information quickly and easily. So like if you wanted to know more about tusks you could look on these pages to find out more about them. Remember, good readers do many things to help them enjoy and understand what they read. So today we are going to take a look at the list that we've been keeping of all these different things that good readers do. And we're going to think about which ones helped us enjoy and understand the book that we read today. So remember, some of the things that good readers do are make connections to their lives, connections between stories, retell stories in their own words, visualize, wonder about what they are reading, make connections to information they already know, and use text features in nonfiction books. So I want you to think about what, when we've read today and when we were reading in our first lesson, and now that you've heard and discussed this book, which of the things on the chart did you do to help you enjoy and understand the book? So maybe you made a connection between the book and your life. Maybe you've seen an elephant at the zoo or somewhere else and you were able to think about that um, time that you did that and what you learned and then the information that was in the book. Or maybe you use the text features to help you learn more about elephants while we were reading. Maybe looking at that diagram really helped you to learn some new information. All right, let's think about what did you like about visualizing the elephants? If you use this one, what did you like about visualizing them? We did that in the beginning of um, the book when we were reading about how big baby elephants are when they are first born. So what did you like about visualizing? So how did thinking about what you already knew help you understand the information in the book? Maybe you already knew that African elephants were the largest land animals. So you were not surprised when you read that their, their trunks are the longest nose of any animal. What was helpful about talking about what you learned and wondered? Maybe it was helpful for you to talk out your thinking and realize all of the different things that you did learn about elephants. And as we stopped each time, you were able to name different things and you realized that you were really learning a lot. What text features in the book helped you learn more about elephants? Maybe 
maybe that diagram really helps you learn a lot more about elephants. We are done with day two of making meaning, so it is time for IDR now. So grab your independent reading books and find a comfy spot to sit and read for the next 15 to 20 minutes. When you're done reading, you've got a page in your district learning packet and it is called First Grade, What Good Readers Do Wednesday. And so just like on Monday, you are gonna answer one of the following questions and think about um, these different things that we've talked about that good readers do. So as you're reading your IDR book, you're gonna be thinking about one of these questions so that you can write a response. So the questions are, what did you visualize or picture in your mind as you were reading? What did you wonder as you were reading? What did you learn? What information in your book reminded you of your own life? What in the book reminded you of information you already knew? And what other books did this book remind you of? So when you have finished your IDR, you can complete this page. All right, it was great learning with you again today. I'll see you next time. Bye.